Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we're looking at two excellent studies on objects that are close by in space, but only for a little while. New minor planet and an update on interstellar comet I-3 Atlas, and we also have an update on the book shipping, so pay close attention there. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find solar flaring has dropped out. Things have been quiet. It's largely because the growing sunspots have stopped growing. We do have two items to be monitoring here as we head into the middle of the week, and we'll start with the deeper dive on the sunspots. Southern Group, it has grown no more. We saw only a spreading of those two umbral cores in the south, and spreading reduces magnetic instability. Without major flares to worry about today, we look to the corona hole and a plasma filament just to the south of it. That's one solar wind enhancement and one eruptive threat here set to face the Earth tonight and tomorrow. Even if the filament remains stable and doesn't erupt, the corona hole is going to impact us with enhanced solar wind towards the end of the week. Quick seismic note, largest of the day was a 6.4 in Vanuatu. They can handle those there easily, but the most notable was a smaller quake in an unusual location. Near magnitude 6 event off the coast of Oregon last night and several aftershocks. Hopefully that region calms down today. First up in the articles, we've got a new minor planet, a dwarf planet, in the outer reach of the solar system. They already know about several of those out past Pluto, but this one could take the cake for the weirdest one. This tiny sphere is only here for a while. Most of its 25,000 year orbit has it far away, in an elliptical orbit. Basically hangs out near the Oort cloud most of the time, but it's here now and we've spotted it on its way out. The top story today, folks, is at Comet Atlas. It is the most negatively polarized comet ever seen, and that high negative polarization pretty much explains the weird stuff about it. The tail direction likely worked electrodynamically. The lack of water in the coma attracted to the negative charge while carbon-oxygen molecules are repelled and expelled. From that perspective, it is indeed the most unique comet we know, which is not surprising since it's an immigrant from another part of the galaxy. Folks, if you ordered the new book, shipping is about to begin. I've only signed about 10% of the books so far. Had to break for a little trip to Florida for Limitless Podcast the last two days. But we are on it. And please, please, please do not email Kat bugging her about your tracking info. We are going as fast as we can. And if you guys cause her anxiety, I may move you to the back of the line. I'm kind of kidding, but maybe not. We're getting them out to you. And that PDF version will become available later this month as well. In November, we're having the film release opening night and making the film available for free online between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Goldobservers.com is our sponsor, and we can thank them for making the documentary free for everyone. Right now, they're offering up to a 10% match on silver, which is basically like you're stealing from the company. Gold and silver have value for every stage of the disaster that is unfolding now, even in the aftermath. And for those of you who are saying, oh, you can't eat it, well, if you're that far behind in your prepping, then you have my prayers and sympathy. We should all be at the stage where stuff like this is where our head is at. Greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. <laughs>